Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and what I want to talk about today is GitHub and how you can use GitHub as your personal note taking thing. And it's not a bad thing to do, it's actually pretty convenient and pretty straightforward and um, yeah, robust. So I was going to show you one, an introduction to Markdown, an introduction to Mermaid all in one video and just kind of how to, to work around the, the GitHub interface. And this is great even if you're not a developer who plans on using GitHub to, you know, track your source code, you can still use GitHub kind of as a, a note-taking uh, app. So let's kind of walk through that. Now, first off, what you would want to do is create a GitHub account. So here I am on GitHub. I created a GitHub account and I'm on logged in. I'm going to click new to create a new repository. So we'll just call this like my notes. This is the my notes repository. Okay, and this is just like, these are my notes. Um, and again, this is, you can choose whether this is public or private. So if these are gonna be like private notes, you're tracking like information that you don't want publicly available, make it private. I'm assuming here, I'm, going, I'm coming from the mindset that you want like notes to help uh, track things down. So if you're a developer, you might wanna track like, oh, how did I set this up? And you wanna track the steps that you to do that. But in one central place, you'll have your notes like, okay, how did I connect to this database? How did I do that? You just want to document things um, and create your own sort of little personal repository of, of knowledge. Okay, so I would make that public because other people might benefit from it and, and no reason not to make it public if that's what you intend. Okay, and in this case, I have to click create repository. Okay, so now I have this repository. Now you could work on it on your computer like you could any other document. Um, uh, or you could do it in the browser and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But what you can do is you can click right here where it says creating new file. Now the first file you should always create is a readme.md. So MD stands for markdown file. And GitHub has special treatment of the readme.md. It becomes sort of like the main page of the website. Okay, and you have this like editor here. And you can use what's called markdown syntax. So in markdown syntax, what you can do is that instead of having to like click the mouse and drag, hey, this text is bold and this text is italics, you can very quickly um, generate uh, basically nice rich text with very simple syntax. So generally any kind of heading is a hash. So there's a heading and there's, you can have two hashes for a slightly smaller heading, three, four, five, six, up to, up to six hashes. Each one is going to be a little bit lower. So I'm going to hit here and say, hey, you know, these are my notes. Okay, and then I can go here and I can commit it. And now when I look at this repo, see right here, like Merced, my notes, I see that like that is in the style of a heading. Okay, so that's called, uh, that's referred to as markdown. So let's go through some of the other things you can do. Um, so since these are my notes, I'm gonna want to, you know, not have everything on one page, but kind of have like sort of like one central sort of like repository or one certain sort of like table of contents. So what I'll do is I'm, I'll put here, like make a slightly smaller heading, call it table of contents. Okay, and then I, you know, I might wanna make different types of notes. Okay, so what I can do is to make a link, you do square brackets, and this is like the text of the link. So we'll say like, these are like, um, you know, application deployment notes. Okay, and then I put parentheses after the square brackets, and that's where I would put the URL. And I'm planning to make like another markdown file, like right here in this folder, so I can just be like dot slash. I plan on making a file called deployment.md, even though I haven't made it yet. I intend to. Okay, and so right there, I've made a smaller heading, and then I've started like a list for like my table of contents. So I can commit, so you can kind of see how it's going so far. And you see, like, there's a smaller heading, there's like the notes. And then if I click on this right now, I get this because that file hasn't been created yet, but I can always just go create that file by going back to the, the main page and then clicking add file. So I'll click add file, create a new file, or I can upload a file. Okay. And then what I can do here is I can make that deployment.md and call this like, I can make this a heading application deployment notes. Okay, and so and then I here and here I might make like a heading saying, you know, like uh, language config files. The reason being is that on Heroku, 
which is something I'll use a lot to deploy applications. On Heroku, the language build pack will be detected based on the language, uh, you know, config file. So what I can do is I can make a chart. So if I'm wondering like, okay, I can't remember what that file is, I can do something like this. So I can make a chart. So I'll use a pipe and say, okay, the first field is going to be like the language. The second field is going to be um, the config file. And then I would do another line. And then I want to make sure this is filled with dashes. This basically is what makes it officially a chart. And then now each line I can make the chart. So I can say, hey, for JavaScript, um, the file is called package.json. For Ruby, the file is called um, gem file. For Python, it's going to look for a requirements.txt. Okay, for Rust, it's going to look for a cargo.toml. You guys get the idea. Okay, but now, because of the syntax here, I now have a chart. Uh, let's put, so now if I click on see application deployment notes, now it does take me to the deployment page because I made that file and there I can see the chart that I made. Okay, so using Markdown, I created a chart. How cool is that? Um, and see, like, I didn't have to be dragging my mouse and doing all this fun, fun, fun stuff. But now I have, again, I have this like nice repo where I can go and organize my notes and organize my thoughts. Um, another cool thing you can do is that basically Visual Studio Code, which is a, a, a code editor, is actually built into GitHub. So you can literally go to any page on GitHub. So if I go to this repo, I can actually hit the period button on my keyboard. So if I hit the period button on my keyboard, it's going to open up uh, Visual Studio Code. Now, like I can't like run software and whatnot from this online version. There's like just some limitations. But when it comes to note taking, you can just write your notes because I can actually still preview Markdown in here. So I can just like work from here, see like the files that I have, and I didn't have to install any software on my computer. Okay, I can see all the files that I have here. I can create more files, make more folders, organize my repo, make my changes. So let's say if I make some more changes. So um, let's show you like Mermaid. So let's say here like an example of a flowchart. So on GitHub, you can now use a syntax called Mermaid. So what I would do is I would use. Um, three backticks. Now three backticks normally like this, like three backticks would be a code block. So that way I can make it like a little section look like code. So I can be like, this is a code block and you'll see later on that that looks like a code block. But if I do a code block that has the word mermaid after the initial ticks, and the idea here is you can always generally put what language the code blocks for, but mermaid gets a special treatment for mermaid. What I can do is I can do like flow chart, I think it's actually capitalized or the Q on this part. Flow chart left right. Okay. And then I can do stuff like um you know one to two three to four. This is called mermaid syntax. So if you want to look up like how to write this out, that's referred to as mermaid three four. Okay, so let's say that's that. And now I see I did that in this editor, but it's not saved yet. Like I can save it, but for me to actually commit it to the repository, I have to go over here to this source control section. This shows me all the files that have changed and I want to make sure I add it to be committed. So you see this little plus button, I click on that and say, Hey, I want to add that. So these are the stage changes. So that means when I commit, these are the changes that will be saved. And then I just click this little check mark, but I got to put a little message here saying, you know, worked in VS code in browser. And then what I do is I just click this little check mark and see now those changes have been saved. So I could work out of this editor, which is a really cool feature. Okay, so I can just take my notes from here. And again, I can preview the readme here. So I go over here, I let it open up the readme. Okay, uh, and then the, the, let me see if we, what happens when we go to the actual repo. Go to repository. Okay, so yeah, I made a mistake in writing this mark down here. I always have to look this up. Uh, mermaid syntax, mermaid, flowchart, okay, this is lowercase, okay, 
So I would make this lowercase flowchart. And see the flowchart just means that, hey, I'm making a flowchart. LR means it's from left to right, the flow of the chart. So now if I commit this again, and see, there we go. So see, one to two, three to four. Now again, I can try to connect all of that. So I can add another entry here and say like two, two, three. And this is really nice to kind of create diagrams to like illustrate like thought processes and whatnot. And I don't have to speed dragging stuff around. It's just going to kind of really make a nice pretty. And I can do also really cool stuff with that, like have different shapes. There's a whole world to the mermaid syntax, okay, as far as like, you know, creating shapes, circles, flags, creating whatever you need to kind of create the chart that you want, along with all that rich text. And I can do this all without ever having to touch my mouse. So I can actually write stuff really quick if you can type really fast. And that's what's kind of really nice about it. And again, it's free because it's GitHub and GitHub is free. And um, it's pretty easy to make copies of it. Like you can just literally just download. I can just click go back to the main page. And if I want to just download all these files, I can just go to code and click download zip. And if you're familiar with how to use Git, I can always clone it to my computer using these links. And another cool feature that a GitHub repo has is that if you don't want to just do a bunch of readme files, you can click right over here to wiki and then just really just start creating pages here in this wiki format, which still uses Markdown. So it's still the same rules, um, but you would just do it over here. Okay. And then you, other cool things you can do is like basically GitHub has a bunch of different features built into it that are meant for other things if you're a developer. But since you're using this as your sort of place of taking notes, I can sit there and like, hey, you know, when I have like something I'm really important to remember, I can make an issue out of it. So and then I can go back and like resolve issues like, hey, you know, did I go do my taxes or hey, you know, did I go take care of that parking ticket or something like that. So I can go here and make these like personal life issues. And then when I, so like if I did that, like, you know, uh, go do groceries. And then I can put like my grocery list here. Okay. And then basically what happens is that when I'm done, so I can go back to my issues and I can see all the issues that I have outstanding. And I'd be like, hey, did I go do my groceries? I can go then close the issue. Okay. And say, hey, like that's done. And now it's no longer there. And then I can always go back and take a look at my old. Uh, so that's a that's one way you can use this in a way to kind of extra enhance what you're doing. Um, pull request probably not something you would use here. Actions probably not something you'd use here. You might want to use projects to organize some things. Um, okay, add projects with peer list, you know, but probably not necessary. Wiki again, you can just create more pages there as well um, if that you find that easier. And then it's just like, these are all like more developer oriented. But the idea behind this is like, you could create a Git repo to be sort of how you interact with, um, how you write, take notes and, and basically how you can keep track of things you can use as your personal organizer. So GitHub is pretty awesome. Um, and if you're a developer, it's also pretty nice because all ever, as you work out of this, these do count as commits and they can help keep, keep your, you know, your commit, your commit, uh, heat map pretty green like actually I should probably start doing that because um, right now I mainly use notion as my main note taking tool but that would have been nice back in like early January for me to have been doing that to kind of make sure that I had gotten filled in okay um, yeah so that's that's how you can use github as your own personal note taking app and some strategies and like really kind of take advantage of the features that github has um, so my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Make sure to subscribe to my podcast, Web Dev 101 and Data Nation, uh, both on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Uh, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and uh, follow me on Twitter at Alex Merced Coder. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, and see you all, and leave a comment.